Hey everyone, welcome to the Cichlid Charmer. So you know how when you have an African cichlid tank, you usually don't want to add a single fish to the aquarium. If you're going to add another fish, you want to add at least two to five of them. And that spreads out the aggression so that you don't have a lot of angry fish focusing in on one fish and just rip them apart. And that is really good advice, which in this situation that I was in, I totally didn't follow. What I did was I had this aquarium that's an eight foot long, 240 gallon, and I wanted to add a single African cichlid peacock to the tank. And I did it. So what happened? How stupid was I? Well, you're about to find out. All right, so I have a little back history for you with this tank. This is a 240 gallon. It's two feet by two feet by eight feet long. And I had some other fish in there that aren't in there right now. I had a dragon blood, a blue dragon blood. I had a red empress and I had a hybrid that was in there too. And they were all very beautiful, but they knew they were beautiful and they wanted to keep it that way so that they would just be the only fish you would ever see on this half of the tank. So they would chase everybody back and then just come back. And sometimes they'd go and nip at them and come back. And that's just a recipe for disaster in my opinion. This is disaster. They're gonna end up with fish with uh, eye damage or scales missing, fins ripped up. And even though you kind of expect that with these kinds of fish, I don't want to have a fish that's very likely to end up doing that. So uh, with a couple of them, I ended up putting them in my grow out tank and just let them hang out there for a while, usually about a week or so, and then put them back in. But I didn't really notice too much of a change. And whenever I did that, I ended up with one of the other guys just popping up and being the bad guy. And I promise I'll kill you quick. So I ended up giving them to the local fish store. And this was about three months ago that I did my last exchange. And since then, it has just been a most peaceful tank that I've ever had for African peacocks and haps. It's an all male tank which you know you don't want to have females because that's going to increase your aggression also. But I've been really happy with how peaceful it's been. I haven't had anybody chasing anybody around except for maybe a, just a small little chase and then they forget about it. So for three months I've had complete peace. But now I have a situation in my grow out tank where I have two OBs. One of them started showing aggression in the other tank when I was about ready to put him in this one and I didn't even want to deal with it. I thought, you know what? I have everything exactly the way I wanted. If I add another OB in here, that's likely to end up like the other ones. It could disturb the whole tank and he might injure somebody. Just not worth it. So I ended up just taking him straight to the, the local fish store. Normally I wouldn't want to do that. I'd want to give him a chance, but I have 35 to 40 fish in here. They're all getting along. Why disturb it? But now I have one OB left in the tank that I do want to add. Probably my last fish that I'll add to this tank. But it's kind of risky because I have everything going exactly the way I want it and I don't want to mess up the balance by adding him. But I still want to add him. I could take a couple fish out of this tank like I mentioned in one of my other videos. It's a good idea to, if you don't have more than one fish, just take a couple out of your existing tank, put them in with the other one for uh, half a week or a week and then put them all back in and then that helps spread out the aggression again. But at the same time, I have the perfect balance in here. And if I take a couple out, it may start a war in here for the hierarchy and disturb my balance, which I didn't want to do. So I'm kind of stuck. I don't want to get rid of the fish and I don't want to add him by himself. I don't want to take fish out, but what do I do? So I know that no one has ever said, hey, add a single fish to your African cichlid tank but it started running through my mind. Maybe this is what I'm gonna do. Let me think of how I could possibly do this. So several of the things I wanted to make sure that were going on while I attempted this were I wanted to have the lights off in this tank. I also wanted to do it at the same time I was doing a water change. And I do my water changes usually on Saturday or Sunday. And I wanted to do this in the morning so that I had a lot of time to observe and see what was going on. So uh, that as well as having uh, massive feeding. So I thawed out some krill, I had it ready to go, and then I also had some pellets around that I could add as an extra bit of, uh, bit of food for them. 
So then I decided that, you know, this is actually, this might work. Everybody says it doesn't work, but I'm gonna give it a shot. I can catch him and get him out if I need to. So I had the lid to the tank open. I had my krill right at the top of the tank, ready to go. I hooked up my, I use a, a pump and a big hose to do the water changes. So I had that sitting inside the tank, ready to go. All I had to do was plug it in. So it was time to do this. So I went back, I got my net, I caught my fish, I brought them over real quick, and first thing I did was I dumped all that krill in the tank. I usually dump it over by my, uh, by my wave maker, and my wave maker will just blow it across the tank so everybody gets some. It's not just like it's falling to the ground and it's a big, big mess of piranha eating the, eating the krill. And that worked, so it went all the way over the tank. I instantly put that net further in the tank and put him down at the bottom and released him. And then I hooked up the pump to pump the water out. And I watched him and everybody's swimming around trying to get the krill. Nobody's watching the new guy. And pretty soon, a lot, most of them are swimming around with krill in their mouth. And it looks like they got a big cigar hanging out because they, they've already eaten probably one and they have another one just hanging out and they're swimming around. And the new guy's actually looking around for food too. So at this point, there are some that don't have krill hanging out of their mouth. So I put a few more pellets in, like a, maybe a teaspoon of pellets, and I dump that in so that spreads across the tank. And now he's kind of just swimming around with everybody else, and he's looking for food. At one point I saw one of the larger fish, he's probably seven inches, go for a pellet, and he went for the pellet at the same time, and he didn't get it, but he swam around, and it looked like he was fitting in quite well. He hadn't colored down. The other fish weren't noticing him, so I thought, well, this might actually have worked. Uh, the one thing that I did notice that was a slight problem was my Embuna Ray owns basically these pipes right here that I got from Petco when they were still making them. And so he likes to hide in there a lot. And I don't recommend having Embuna with African peacocks and haps, but in this situation I do. And so the new guy started going in the pipes a little bit and Ray didn't like that. So he started chasing him around a little bit to get him away from his area. Hey, get out of my home. And that happened a few times, but then Ray kind of settled down and nobody really seemed to care that he was in there. In this situation too, I have a lot of larger fish. I have a fursicata, excuse me if I mispronounce any of these names, that I acquired from a local person who wanted to get rid of him. And he's about probably nine inches long. So this is a huge guy, and the fish that I added was only three inches. Not really a problem. Uh, this fish is very docile and, and uh, fun to have. And then I have my blue dolphin, Moby, and he never chases anybody unless they deserve to be chased. He's a very peaceful fish, but he's about, he's about seven inches. I also have my Malawi hawk, who is about six to seven inches, and he didn't seem to notice that anything was going on, which was good. And he's usually peaceful. I mean, sometimes when I add a fish, he'll, he'll hover over them and then flip on his side and watch them with one eye, which is really cool to watch. But he didn't do that either. It was like nobody knew he was there. Then I have my old tank boss, and sometimes he is the tank boss, but he's Zeke, the zebra obliquidens, and he's usually a very, uh, a very peaceful fish. He only chases fish when they need to be chased also. Then I have a few other ones like my Nagara flame tail, and he didn't seem to mind. Nobody seemed to really care that he was in here. So I gave it a few hours and kept watching, and making sure that he wasn't being chased around, seeing if people, seeing if the other fish were noticing him, and not really. I mean, it was like he was just part of the tank. And then this shot is actually in the evening after it's been a while, and he looks like he's doing fine. I mean, I'm not afraid to go to sleep and just leave the light off. Right now it's been about a week since I did this change, and I have had no problems at all. He's just swimming around like everybody else. You know, I, I do have another OB that has similar markings as him. I was a little concerned that he might eventually think, hey, you know, there's... There can be only one. But no, he's been perfectly fine with him. Nobody has shown any aggression 
and I've been perfectly happy with this decision I made. Now, do I recommend that you do this? And I would definitely say, you know, I don't recommend this for anyone to do. It's kind of a last ditch effort. If you want to add a single fish and you don't want any more and you don't want to mess up your disturb or disturb your balance in the tank. I would never have done this with a 75 gallon tank because there's just not enough room for him to not get noticed. This is an eight foot long tank. I probably would have done it in a six foot long tank because there's plenty of room for him to, to get around and get away from other fish that want to chase him. Uh, I wouldn't do it in a 75, I wouldn't do it in a 90. It would have to be at least a six foot tank. And I also did all those things to make sure that they were distracted at the same time. I would never have done this if it was just maybe late at night and I wasn't gonna have time to watch them or with the light on or without feeding them or doing a water change. I had to do all of these things at once, I think, to make sure that everything was gonna be okay. So it worked out for me this one time. Hopefully I never have to do it again and hopefully you never have to do it either. But how stupid do you think I was for even doing this? Let me know in the comments if you think it was a bad idea, if you think it was a good idea, given the circumstances. Until next time you've been watching The Cichlid Charmer, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. I appreciate that. It helps get this video out to other people. And have a great week and keep enjoying your cichlids.